Today, I'd like to talk about the cosmic meaning of the number seven in the nine. And that might sound a little bit confusing, but we're, we're, we're fascinated by the decimalization of the number seven. There's seven days in a week, seven colors of the spectrum, seven chakras. So the ancient people revered number seven. And what I'm going to show you is that we're going to work with the fraction one seventh. And we already know that the, on the calculator, one seventh is 0.142857, but it repeats. So we get so part one is going to show us how the number seven is embedded in the nine point circle. So we're going to explore the decimal 142857 inside the nine point circle. And in part two, we're going to look at um, what Gurdjieff did with it. So this is part one and then part two. So to understand the fraction one on seven, I'm going to show you here on my calculator. We're going to take the number one divided by the number seven. And you'll see that on the calculator, it, it only gives you part of the answer. It gives you point one four two eight five seven, And then it should keep going on forever, one four two eight five seven. So we call this a circulating decimal. But on the calculator, it doesn't show you the full picture. So that's the fraction, and I'm just going to highlight it over here. 142857, and this only makes sense when we have a circle. Here it's divided into six, but decimal means when the circle is divided into ten. So if you could visualize the pizza with ten slices, triangular slices, we know that 0.142 is the relationship to the number ten. But I'm going to write these... Because these decimals, one, four, two, eight, five, seven, repeat forever, I'm going to plot these six digits in the decimal system onto a wheel. So it's going to go, we're going to put one, four, two, eight, oh, sorry, eight, five, seven. And you can see that if you start to explore this, you'll see that there's a opposite opposing number one is an eight, the one and the eight. And this adds up to nine. If we if we take the two, the two and seven is also nine. And also the four and five is also nine. So straight away, those six digits are have a relationship with three opposing pairs of nine. So we could rewrite this decimal one four two in two lines. So I could go one four two and and write those other th three digits. 857 underneath it. So if I was to actually add them up, this is number theory. We're just exploring what arises, what's hidden inside all this um, mathematics. So 2 and 7 is a 9, 4 and 5 is a 9, and 1 and 8 is also a 9. So, so this is all about the number 7, right? We're, we're talking about the number, the reciprocal of 7, and how it repeats and crops up in the number nine. So it sounds cryptic. That what's a seven in the nine? So the fact that we have three pairs of nine here, three nines are 27. So this, so this 999 code is really a seed. It's something that can sprout and begin further, further development. So from the number 27, we realize that all the harmonics in the universe, in astronomy, in time, um, and space travel, all these numbers arise, so 54. And then here we have 108. If you double, what we're doing is we're doing a binary. We're doubling 27, 54, 108, very sacred number, Shri 108. Double that is 216. The moon's radius is 21,600 miles. Double this is 43,432. There's 43,200 seconds in half a day. Double, double that, you get 864. And we keep going to 1728, um, 1728, which is 12 cubed. That's the number 12 to the power of 3. And when we double that again, we get 3456. So these are scaling ratios that go throughout the atomic world and the universe as well. So I just wanted to say that somehow the number 7 gives us a clue that it's embedded in the, the meaning of the nine and it, it's a harmonic sequence. This is a very cosmic sequence, but somehow it all started from the reciprocal of seven. So I'm going to take this off and show you a little bit more number theory about the decimal, one, four, two, eight, five, seven. We want to know how, how can we actually derive that 
from starting from the number seven. So I'll take this off and you'll see that we have another board. And so this is the other half of part one. It's called the reciprocal of seven, but we want to arrive at that decimal, 0 0.142857, 142857. It's a foreverness, it goes forever. So I'm gonna start off with a bit of number theory. So don't get um, shut down by it. Just have a, appreciate what I'm about to show you. So seven, so you can see we're gonna multiply by seven all the binary codes. So when I'm talking about binary, I'm talking about two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128. So we're multiplying seven by the powers of two. So seven times two, as you know, equals 14. We know that. Then seven times four, the next power of two, is 28. Now notice that I'm not writing I'm not writing 28 here. I'm gonna write 28 always two spaces from the beginning. So I go to the next um, two spaces because we're gonna be adding up all these columns in a minute. So seven times the next power, seven times eight is 56. So notice how I'm putting it after the 28. I'm, there's an alignment. And that's why when we're doing mathematics, it's always good to do neat working out because a lot of children that I work with, they mix up their columns and they're not writing neatly. So neatness is critical in understanding the derivation of 0.142857. So seven times the next power is six, seven times 16 is 112. Now, this is the two spaces after the 56, but because I've got a, a third digit, I'm putting the one under my six, just so you can appreciate that I'm lining up my columns. I've moved from here two spaces, two spaces, two spaces, and we'll, we will continue to do that. Seven times 32, which is two to the fifth power, um, is 224. So there's the two and the 24, as you can see, is two spaces after. So you can see we're building it up. We're going to keep writing seven times 64 is 448. I'll speed it up because we've got a bit of adding up to do. And seven times 128 is 896. Okay, so we've got a bit of adding up to do. So just ignore that six. So let's um, um, so let's just start adding up. The, the, the next one, seven times two to the eighth power, sort of has a 17 there, but we won't, we won't, we're gonna start adding all these columns now. So um, one, six and seven is 13, we carry the one, so we've got nine and two is a one. We've got a one here. We're adding up everything now. So, and so we're gonna start from the right-hand side. So nine and two is 11, we put down the one, we carry the one here. Eight and eight is 16, plus the one is 17. Put down the seven, carry the one. I actually might go through the ones we've done. Four, four and the carryover is five. So I'm just checking that you can see that. So I'm gonna put a line through that. Four and four is eight. Um, the two comes down, working down our columns, there's the four. And there's only a one here, so there's the one. So can you see what's happening? We've got one, four, two, eight, five, seven. Let's see if it keeps going. So so here we've got six, uh, six and one is a seven. That five comes down to there. The eight comes down. This two comes down. The four comes down. And here's our initial one. So there's the one. And what you can see is that we've literally derived the decimal, the decimalization of the, the number seven. And number seven is the macro. And this 0.142857 represents the microcosm. So through the decimalization of holy numbers like number seven, we're actually making a bridge between the worlds. We're connecting the macrocosm and the microcosm expressed by whole integers and also by their decimals. Um, as sacred mathematics. And that's why reciprocals are important. One is like the unity consciousness. And when we divide whole numbers into unity, we end up with beautiful symmetry. This is the mathematics of the soul, the symmetry of our divine connection to source.
We've been looking at the number seven in the nine. So this is part two on the number theory based on number seven and its reciprocal. So we saw before how the reciprocal of seven, when you divide one by seven, it's one, four, two, eight, five, seven. And we know that this decimal, it doesn't stop at the seven. It keeps going forever and ever, one, four, two, eight, five, seven. And we say that it has a periodicity, a repeat cycle of six digits, right? And this is only based on the decimal system when we divide the circle into 10. But here we've divided the circle into nine. So we've just done one divided by seven. If I wanted to show you what's two divided by seven. So in your head, once you memorize 0.142857, you already know the answer for two divided by seven, because you look at the, you, you get, we've done the one, so we tick the one. What's the next smallest number there? We have a two. So we know that the next fraction, two seventh, starts from two eight, must go point two eight five seven, and then you go back to there one four. So just to check on the calculator here, when we have um, the calculator here, we say two divided by seven equals point two eight five seven one four, and that repeats point two eight five seven one four. So that's the seventh, and I just wanted to show you in part one to work out what's three divided by sevenths or four sevenths, five sevenths. When we looked at the board before, when we looked at the board before, we could see that we wrote the decimal one seventh, one, four, two, eight, five, seven. So when we, um, we just did the two, right? So we started the decimal from here, point two, eight, five, seven, one, four. So what would be three sevenths? So, so we've done the one, we've done the two. What's the next smallest number is a four. So we know that three sevens is going to start at point four two eight five seven one. So it's going to be so three sevens is going to be point four two eight five seven one. We'll just do one more. So if I said to you what's five sevens? So we've done the four. We've got one two four. The next smallest decimal, the next smallest number is a five. So the answer would be. 0 0.57142, 0 0.57142, so, so now we can write that in, so 5 sevenths here, um, no, 4 sevenths here, 4 divided by 7 equals 0 0.571425, uh, 428, so that's a nice little trick how to memorize in your head, it's almost like a magic trick, people go, how, how did you know that the decimal for 4 divided by 7th was 0 0.57, 5, 0.571428, because you know you memorized 1 7th. Once you memorize 142857, you can remember all the fractions. Um, it even works out that when you've got, say, 9 divided by 7, we know it's going to equal 1 something. So 9 divided by 7 is 1.285714, because it's just continuing on. But what we're interested in now is we want to we want to take the nine point circle one two three four five six seven eight nine. We, I've already drawn in the numbers that are absent from the decimalization of number seven. That we know that the numbers that are absent here are the three, the six, and the nine. So we we I've drawn in the three, the six, and the nine, and that's just going to be in the background. What we want to do now is we want to construct the pathway on the nine point circle, which we're going to give it a name, Enea gram. A gram means like a star. We're going to do like a starlight pattern. Enea means a nine. So we want to plot one, four, two, eight, five, seven. So I'm going to need, um, I'm going to need a ruler. We look at the one. So I'm going to start from one and then I'm going to go to the four here. So I'm going to join a line from one to four. So that's one, four and the next decimal is two, one, four, two. So it's going back to here. So it's one, four, two, one, four, two. Now we've got to go to the next one is to an eight. So the eight is over here. So we cross over to the eight. And this just, by the way, was sacred to the school of Gurdjieff. He was a, a, a Russian philosopher uh, who devoted his whole mystic school of philosophy based on one, four, two, eight, five, seven, the, the decimalization of number seven.
one, four, two, eight. The next number is the five. So we go from eight to the five. So we go down to here. So there's a lot more information to this and we're going to look at some number theory, but just wanted to show you that this is like an emblem for a whole school of thought. And the next one is from five. Here we're going to the seven and we've completed the decimal. So we go from five to seven. But to close the circuit, I, I, end on, I ended up on seven, but we started at one. So I'm going to join a line from the seven to the one, just to, um, if this was electricity, we, we're closing the circuit board. So now you can see a kind of symmetrical pattern. It's, it's not really the most amazing pattern. It's not like a star-like form, but it has a symmetry. It, it, it can be mirror image through the center there if you folded it. It, it is special. But it's just a pattern. And um, what I want to show you underneath this pattern is the um, factors of the number seven that are inside this decimal. So we're going to explore 0 0.142857 in between the numbers from one to 10, from one to 100, one to 1,000, even right up to 10 million. So, so I'm going to ask the question. So... So we've done the neogram. We're focusing just on the decimal now, 0.142857. We're talking about the number seven. So how many factors, how many, how many um, numbers are divisible by seven? Between one and 10, we know that there's only one number. There's only one number divisible by seven. Okay, we're still talking about the number seven. So we're looking at, we'll write the word, we're looking at the factors now. Factors is just your seven times table. So if we if we went from one to a hundred and said how many numbers can seven divide between a hundred? It's your seven times table. Seven, fourteen, twenty-one, twenty-eight. We know there's fourteen numbers. From one to a thousand, um, the answer would be there's a hundred and forty-two. There's a hundred and forty-two factors of seven between one and a thousand. And just by looking at these numbers. 1, 14, 1, 4, 2. Can you actually see what's emerging without me even completing this? Can you see that something is familiar about 1, 1, 4, 1, 4, 2? We'll do one more. Between 1 and 10,000, there's actually 1,428 factors. And I'll keep going. Between 1 and 100,000, there's 1, 4, 2, Eight five, which is fourteen thousand two hundred eighty five, and between one and a million, there's one four two eight five seven. So when we got to a million, can you see that that's actually the decimalization for the fraction one on seven? One seventh is point one four two eight five seven. Repeat, and when we say repeater, we can put dots above the numbers, but when you put a line above all that, it means that those six decimals are repeating. And it just happens that if you kept going from 1 to 10 million, there's 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7, 1. That cycle keeps repeating. That 1 here repeats again. And it just goes on forever and ever. So um, I just wanted to share with you a little bit of number theory because numbers are a part of our world. Numbers need to be made special and um, elegant again. So I've always loved how the number 7 has deep philosophy embedded in it. And um, th what I've just shown you now is supreme knowledge. I mean, like, we don't even know which mathematician discovered this, but this is a, what we call a mathematical gem. And it's part of recognizing that amidst this world of chaos and confusion and difficulty that underlying our life, there is there must be a supreme intelligence and an order, a symmetry, a harmony, a recognition of a, a divine plan because these numbers one two three four five six are a natural progression but they form a whole universal language of pattern recognition it's the symmetry of the soul